So about a month ago, I did a video going over the 10 fastest players in Major League Baseball. There's some fast guys in the league, Tim LaCastro, Roman Quinn, and even Trey Turner, a good player that's also fast. Today, we're talking about the strongest player. You know, guys that remind you most of like me, because clearly like, you know, I'm, I'm super strong. But seriously, just guys that absolutely mash baseballs. So I'm gonna be looking at the 10 guys that have the highest max exit velo on the season because we want to see who has the most raw pack. Yes, average exit velo would tell you who hits for power more consistently, but someone who hits the ball 120 miles per hour they're pretty strong. So we're going off max exit velos for these rankings. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video and you want me to do maybe strongest player from each team or fastest player from each team, you know, drop a like on the video. 2,500 likes, I can get that done for you. Make sure you sub to the channel if you do enjoy what you see here so you don't miss out. Get in the comments down below. Let me know what player you thought was going to be on here and got snubbed. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and the second channel. Links, as always, are in the description down below. So without further ado, let's get going into our top 10 strongest players in Major League Baseball. So coming in as the 10th, 10th strongest player in Major League Baseball. This one might surprise you. Second baseman for the Arizona Diamondbacks, Cattell Marte, who's actually tied with the two guys above him, but the tiebreaker was average exit velo and he was the lowest. Cattell Marte had a 115.9 mile per hour max exit velo in the 2020 season, and the dude just rakes. But I will say 2020, he did take a little bit of a step back. 2019, we know how amazing he was. Finished fourth in the MVP voting, 32 homers, 36 doubles, nine RBIs, and 981 OPS. Really broke out. 2020 though, as I just said, not that great. Only two Two homers, 14 doubles, and 17 RBIs, 287 average, 323 on base, 409 slugging, and a 732 OPS. A very lackluster performance from Cattell Marte. He took a step back, but again, in a short season, I don't think you should put too much stock into it. Cattell Marte is a good player, and I fully expect him to bounce back in 2021. Now, for the next player coming in at number nine, also with 115.9 miles per hour on max exit velo, Blue Jays outfielder Teoscar Hernandez, who had an average exit velo of 93.3 miles per hour. Teoscar had such a fantastic season in 2020. 20. I feel like I've mentioned him in a lot of videos I've been doing recently because he was underrated. He was valuable. He did it all and he had a breakout year. In 50 games, he had 16 homers, 7 doubles, and 34 RBIs, along with 6 stolen bases, hitting 289 with a 340 on base, 579 slugging, and a 919 OPS. Got him in 11th place finish in MVP, and he won the Silver Slugger. He had a career season across the board and is a part of the Blue Jays' future plans now. He's a part of that great young offense that's going to include guys like Guerrero, Bichette, Kevin Biggio, Guriel, and now Teoscar Hernandez. So for a a guy who hits the ball very hard. It finally all came together in 2020 and we saw the production really skyrocket for him. Great season from Teoscar. For the eighth strongest player in Major League Baseball, again tied with the max exit velo of 115.9 miles per hour, Matt Chapman of the Oakland A's. And I don't think this one's a surprise to many people. He hits the baseball very hard when he does hit it. Now Chapman's season was cut short in 2020 due to injury. He only played in 37 games, but in those 37, he made quite an impact. 10 homers, 9 doubles, 3 triples, and 25 RBIs. The average has never been particularly high for him. It was at 232 last year, along with a 276 on base, which wasn't great, but a 535 slugging saved his OPS to put him at 812. Combine that with his amazing glove, he still made quite the impact in 2020 and is one of the best third basemen in the game. We saw him rake in 2019. We saw him rake in 2018. As long as he's healthy and on the field, Chapman has a huge impact for the Oakland A's and is one of their most valuable players, if not the most valuable player on that team. And he hits baseballs really hard. He had an average exit velo of 93.6. At the number seven spot, we've got a shortstop for the Chicago Cubs, Javi Baez. Now, maybe this one comes a little bit as a surprise to you because Javi Baez is a little bit smaller. You'd never think of him as one of the stronger players in baseball, but when he does make contact, he hits it very hard. I mean, the guy takes a war hack at the plate. Javi Baez had a max exit view of 116 miles an hour. 2020 was a bad year though. Eight homers, nine doubles, and 24 RBIs with three stolen bases, hitting 203 with a 238 on base, 360 slugging, and a 599 OPS. That's a really bad season for Javi Baez. Of course, he still has that great glove, one of a gold glove in 2020, but the offense just wasn't there. It was nothing like 2018 and 19, where he was one of the better shortstops in baseball. That being said, the most concerning thing with Javi Baez is just how much he swung and missed last year. 75 strikeouts and 222 at bats. But when he does make contact with the baseball, he does hit it very hard. An average exit velo of almost 90 miles an hour. He's a good ball player, just needs to put the ball in play a little more consistently. And you'll see those numbers rise. Javi Baez, seventh strongest player in Major League Baseball, according to Max Exit Velo. Just missing out on the top five, the second player of the Toronto Blue Jays coming in at number six, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Now, I think everybody knew this guy was coming. If you've seen him hit a baseball and specifically you watch the home run derby or seen him take BP, he just absolutely crushes baseballs. That being said though, his numbers have been a little bit disappointing, but 2020 he did get better. Nine homers, 13 doubles, and 33 RBIs on the season with a 262 average, 329 on base, 462 slugging, and a 791 OPS. Gave him an OPS plus at 115. Now of course these aren't the MVP type numbers that people thought Vlad Guerrero Jr. was going to have right off the rip in the majors, but we are seeing a little bit of an improvement. Apparently he's lost a lot of weight this offseason 
season, which is going to be good for him. He needs to get a little thinner. I'm expecting big things for Vlad Jr. in 2021. He had an average exit velo of 92.5, max exit velo of 116.1. He's just got to hit the ball in the air a little bit more. If he gets that lift, you are going to see this guy pop off. He had an average launch angle of 4.6 last year. In the air, and Vlad Jr., he's going to be running around those bases all the time. Getting our top five started, coming in at number five, we have Boston Red Sox third baseman, Rafael Devers. Rafi Big Scoops. Devers, another one of these young kids who just gets up to the plate and absolutely mashes. And 2020, while he did get off to a bit of a slow start, he recovered towards the end and finished with a decent season. 11 homers, 16 doubles, 43 RBIs, a 263 average, 310 on base, 483 slugging, and a 793 OPS, just missing out on 800, but technically according to OPS Plus, he was still an above average hitter. And that's coming off a great 2019 where he led the league in doubles, 32 homers, 115 RBIs, 916 OPS. I mean, we know how hard this guy swings the plate. He crushes baseballs. It's always just been a matter of consistency and putting the ball in play a little bit more. And Rafael Devers, while his numbers weren't jumping off the page in 2020, we know he's a good ball player and he hits the ball exceptionally hard. Rafael Devers had a max exit velo of 116.7 miles an hour, an average exit velo of 93 miles an hour. Just got to get a little bit better in the field and he can become a top player in the league for sure at some point. For the fourth strongest player, we have another Toronto Blue Jay. Are they the strongest team in baseball possibly? First baseman, Rowdy Telez. I did not expect Rowdy Telez to be on this list. I'm not going to lie. But Rowdy had a really good year in 2020. And when he was hitting the baseball, he was hitting it really hard. An average exit velo of 90.7 miles an hour. And of course, the max was at 117.4. So yeah, if you hit the ball 117 miles an hour, you know he's had a pretty good season. 35 games, 113 at-bats. He hit eight homers, five doubles to give him 23 RBIs, 283 batting average, 346 on base, 540 slugging to give him 886 OPS, which is really solid. An improvement on what we saw in 2019, where he was a little lackluster. Wasn't hitting for average, barely got on base, but we saw him more patient at the plate, taking advantage of bad pitches and hitting them very, very hard. Rowdy Telez might have been an afterthought in this future of the Toronto Blue Jays, but after the 2020 season we saw him have, he definitely has to be a part of that future. And if he's hitting the ball 117 miles an hour, it's going to go a long way most of the time. So Rowdy Telez, number four, third Blue Jay of the video. Coming in at the number three spot, I love to rip on him on this channel, New York Yankees catcher, Gary Sanchez, the Kraken. Gary Sanchez has a max exit velo in 2020 of 117.5 miles an hour, and you probably understand that. He's always been hitting the baseball hard. He has the best power out of any catcher in Major League Baseball, and obviously he has elite power potential considering how hard he hits the baseball. Even his average exit velo is really hard. One of the top in the league at 91.8. But with Gary, and like many guys who hit baseballs that hard, he doesn't hit the ball consistently, and he's also garbage behind the plate. 2020 was a nightmare season for him. He still hit 10 homers, but only four doubles to give him 24 RBIs, a 147 batting average. You might say batting average doesn't matter. Well, that's horrible there. 147 is bad no matter how you slice it. 253 on base, 365 slugging, a 618 OPS. Gary looked completely lost in 2020. Kyle Higashioka started getting a lot of playing time over him. Garrett Cole won't pitch to him. Unless Gary Sanchez really starts to clean up his game, he's in danger of being traded, benched, whatever it is. He has so much raw potential and so much raw power that as long as he hits like he has in the past 2019 where he hit 34 long bombs, he's got value. But if he's not going to hit and he's not going to play good defensively, he's got no spot on a team. So Gary Sanchez, ton of power. Can he fix it for 2021? I think he can, but I don't know. I just kind of out on Gary. Still third strongest player in Major League Baseball, which leads us now to our number two strongest player in Major League Baseball, just missing on the number one spot, sticking in New York, this time with the Mets, Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso had a max exit velo of 118.4 miles an hour in 2020 with an average exit velo of 90.2. The guy hits the baseball very hard. And similar to Gary, did have a bit of a lackluster season. It wasn't his best, especially coming off a rookie campaign where he won rookie of the year and hit 53 long bombs. Still though, he hit 16 homers on the season, only six doubles, 35 RBIs, a 231 batting average, not great, but a 326 on base is very encouraging. He was still somewhat patient enough at the plate to get on base. 490 slugging gave him an 817 OPS. So even in what was a down year for Pete Alonso, he was still a plus hitter at the plate. So maybe he's not the best first baseman in baseball, like a lot of people were saying or overhyping, but he is still a very good player and you shouldn't give up hope on him whatsoever. 16 homers in 57 games is no joke. And honestly, it was on pace for what he was doing in 2019 where he hit 53. So while some people are out on Pete, I'm still in on the polar bear. He's still my favorite player in baseball. And I'm excited to see what he can do in 2021. He hits the ball so hard, just do it a little more consistently. And you've got an absolute animal at first base in Pete Alonso. And then coming in at number one, you probably could have guessed who it was. Plays for the New York Yankees, Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton had a max exit velo in 2020 of 121.3 miles an hour. What? What? That ball's hit so hard. He had an average exit velo of 91.9 in his very few plate appearances he had in the season. And I mean, you see this guy at the plate. He's a huge human being. He's got muscles on top of his muscles. He's literally bursting through his jersey. I don't think it's any surprise that he leads as the strongest player in Major League Baseball, according to Max Exit Vila. Now, the last two years,
years. He's only played a total of 41 games. We'll combine them together. Still pretty good. Seven homers, 10 doubles, 24 RBIs, 267 average, 394 on base, which is gross. 496 slugging, which is surprisingly low, but an 890 OPS. I mean, the guy still is a very, very good player. I know Yankees fans like to get on this guy because he's hurt and they feel like he strikes out too much, but Giancarlo is still one of the best players on the Yankees. He still has immense value. While his contract is going to handcuff him down the road, you are going to get some good years out of him once he is healthy. He is a large human being. He's probably the scariest human being at the plate in Major League Baseball. One of the scariest guys that I can think of size-wise in baseball history. Giancarlo Stanton is a strong man, and I don't want to face him ever. Playing in that band box Little League Stadium that is Yankee Stadium, he's going to hit a lot of homers because he just hits the ball too hard not to. So Giancarlo Stanton comes in as the obvious pick, the obvious choice for the number one strongest player in Major League Baseball in 2020. So those are the 10 strongest players in Major League Baseball for the 2020 season. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? I want to hear what you have to say. Remember to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Drop me a follow on Twitter and Instagram, Draft Nick Mark. Links in the description along with all my other social media. Those are the 10 strongest guys. Giancarlo, Pete Alonso, a lot of New York being represented there. And a lot of these guys are also very good. So maybe strength does correlate to how good of a player you are. Who knows? But that's where we're going to wrap it up. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.